Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. In a previous video in this series, I talked a little bit about boundary layers. That's the layer of air closest to the bodywork where the airspeed is not the same as the forward speed of the car. Right against the metal of the bodywork, the airspeed is zero. And you might have to go one inch or two inches or even more away from the bodywork before the airspeed becomes the same as the forward speed of the car. As you go towards the back of the car, the boundary layer is getting thicker. One of the problems of that is that a thick boundary layer doesn't want to follow the shape of the car. So separation occurs more easily where the air goes its own way. I also mentioned in passing that there is a way of putting some energy back into that boundary layer. So reducing its thickness. And that way is to use what are called vortex generators. Now, vortex generators made a great appearance on the Evo Lancer, the Mitsubishi Evo Lancer, where there were little shark's teeth across the top of the back window. And that opened everyone's eyes to the potential of them to create more energized boundary layers. Now, it's interesting when you start looking at vortex generators because lots of different shapes can cause those vortices that you want. Uh, in one of the engineering papers I mentioned in the book, they used little cylinders of magnets stacked on top of each other, and they created vortices. I've seen uh, the ones like the Lancer ones, little shark's teeth, little delta-shaped wings, all sorts of things can potentially generate vortices and so potentially energize that boundary layer. But the ones that I've found to be the most effective to work really, really well uh, a commercial design of vortex generator called an air tab made in the US and in operation you align them in that way the air flows through and starts to swirl behind creating those shedding vortices and energizing the boundary layer now that all sounds very technical when would you use them well that's really interesting a lot of people suggest that vortex generators can be used to drag air into the wake and by dragging air into the wake, reduce drag. None of the testing I have done has ever indicated that that is effective. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm saying what I've done on the road using vortex generators to try to pull air into the wake has never been a positive outcome, never. And interestingly, the SAE engineering paper, where they try to achieve the same, a Peugeot paper, they don't actually have any success there either. Drag just goes up. So I am a bit doubtful that vortex generators designed to pull air into the wake actually work. Perhaps they work in only some very select uh, situations. But what I'm equally confident about is if you want to promote better flow attachment across a change in angle, then vortex generators can be very, very effective. Now, what am I talking about? Well, let's say that you wall tuft the rear half of a car, put little tufts of wool over it so you can actually see whether the flow is attached or whether the flow is separated. Remember, separated flow, the tufts whirl around and go in all sorts of funny directions, sometimes even straight upwards, where, whereas when the flow is attached, they're all lined up, in, in aligning themselves with the flow. So if you walked off the back of a, a car, let's say a sedan, and you look at the pattern of flow on the rear window, often you can see flow separation. That is, the airflow is not sticking in the corner, around that corner from the roof onto the rear window. It separates and sometimes reattaches a bit further on, creating a separation bubble. Now, in those circumstances, using these sorts of vortex generators can be very, very powerful because you can see the results straight away. You put the vortex generator on, stick it on just with masking tape temporarily, and you can actually see that there's better flow attachment on the rear window. Now, I've done this uh, a number of times on different cars. Uh, one of them was on uh, the NHW10 Prius, Toyota Prius, which was the first Japanese-only model Prius. And it had a separation bubble occurring on the rear window. And I tried using different numbers of vortex generators, the AirTab vortex generators, across the trailing edge of the roof. And the more I put on, basically, the better the flow attachment was on the rear window. It was really quite effective in changing flow, reducing the thickness of the boundary layer, putting energy back into that, and then giving, giving better flow attachment onto the rear glass. I did it on another car as well. I did it on a Honda Legend. And that was interesting, because if you put the vortex generators on the trailing edge of the roof, 
just in front of the rear window, it made no difference. And I was fascinated by that. You could see in the wall tufts there was no change in behaviour, there was still separation in the middle of the rear window. And I gradually pulled the line of vortex generators further down the rear window. So instead of them being on the roof, I actually started to creep down onto the rear window and I tested them in that way. And when they were about, oh, from memory, about a third of the way down the rear window, perhaps a little bit more, they started to create that flow attachment and the whole flow on the rear window and the first part of the boot lid, the trunk lid, dramatically changed. So these Vortex generators, air tabs, uh, I'm, I'm a real fan of them in terms of promoting better flow attachment, uh, where I've seen uh, very good evidence that they're effective. I'm less impressed with the idea of vortex generators of any sort pulling air into the wake. Although I must admit, the, the man who invented these, uh, he and I had some email communication and he did say that filling the wake was a possibility with these. And, and so, you know, I, I take, that on, take that on his advice, but, but I've never seen it actually occur. So vortex generators, if you want to improve flow attachment on a surface where there is separation, perhaps because the uh, change of angle is too great considering the size of the boundary layer at that point, the thickness of the boundary layer, I think they're a very, very useful uh, tool to employ. And of course, with the beauty of road testing, the beauty of wool tough testing, uh, you can see very quickly if in fact they're doing something. A, f a final note on these, they're quite cheap. So it's worth buying five or ten of them and having a play with them on your car if you can see flow separation that you think could be addressed by this sort of device. Uh, as I say, stick them on just temporarily with, uh, with paper-based masking tape, then you can easily take them off, move them around and so on. Uh, for the low cost, it's very much, I think, uh, something worth trialling in those particular situations. The book's called Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. I cover the use of Vortex generators, I cover the NHW10 Prius, I cover the Honda Legend, and I also use them in other aspects, other uh, behaviours as well. Uh, uh, at least one, which was really interesting, uh, actually made things go backwards. But I'll let you read the book to actually find out what that particular one was. Uh, thank you for listening to me today.